Hi, welcome to Red Exchange. My name is Craig Dial, and I'm here to continue to talk about maximizing your cone beam CT. I'd like to think that you've watched some of the other videos about image resolution and improving your image quality. Earlier on, we've talked about calibration, signal, and noise. And today we're going to talk about motion artifact, how this can affect your quality of image and resolution. If we were to talk about just one thing to improve your image quality, I think patient motion has the biggest advantage. So patients can introduce and create noise into your scan by reducing patient motion, uh, reducing noise. And that's really the motion artifact aspect of it, when you see the double image and the quality of the scan. Sometimes it's very easy to see, and other times it's not. So when we increase the scan time, we increase the chance potential of patient motion. And the more motion equals the more noise. And how it happens is as you take an x-ray through the patient and the patient has a slight rotation of their head during the scan, then that's going to affect the image quality. Now we really want to make sure the patients are stable and don't move. And that's what this piece is going to be talking about today. And we look at gross patient motion artifact, as you can see in this slide, it's very obvious that this is a double image, low quality x-ray. There's very little, if any, diagnostic value. And this scan most likely needs to be retaken. We need to instruct the patient that they moved quite a bit and we need to make sure that they don't happen again. So we uh, talk about patient motion artifact. And in this kind of case, it's very easy to see that this quality is uh, unacceptable. But then sometimes we have little nuances and small quality issues where the patient just moves a little bit. As you can see in this particular image right here, there's a double border image and this cluster odontome, we can't be sure what this is and it's double imaged just slightly. So there's a slight patient motion artifact in this scan and it's degraded the quality of the scan and make it difficult for diagnostics. I received a case off of beam readers not too long ago where the study purpose was to look at the airway, look at the TM joints and the supporting structures. And the doctor that asked for the study purpose wrote this note about the airway analysis, hyperlax joints, TMJ popping, evaluate the entire scan. And so you can see the scan has all this noise all over it, and that's really due to patient motion. And this is a close up of that same scan where we see double borders, fuzziness, not crisp whatsoever. The TM joints are almost impossible to look at. And so the radiologist is gonna have a hard time giving you a good clean report based on this image study. So we need to find out what we can do to improve patient motion on all of our scans. Now, depending on which machine that you have, you might be able to look at the raw data, which we do in some of our scanners, and you can walk through slices in the scan, and we can see whether the patient moved or not as we're walking through slices. And if we look at this particular raw data set, we can see the patient move their head, we can see the patient opens their teeth, and this affects the quality of the scan. So I would show the patient this scan and say, look, this is when you moved, we need to take this again, and we have to make sure that we clearly uh, understand what the problem is so they can hold steady when you retake it. So managing patient motion. I recommend having the staff place you yourself in your cone beam CT unit. And then ask yourself, am I comfortable sitting in here? Is anything poking me? Am I able to sit up straight? And then can you easily move your head and your head positioner? Once the staff has positioned you as a regular patient, how easy is it to be moving around? And then think about your patient base. How would they do? Do you have elderly patients mostly? Do you have small children? How would they be able to fit into your particular machine? Check the head device itself. Some of these devices do not have tight tolerances. And check to see if yours has any play or is it solid. Most of our machines, we've had to make small modifications in order to make them more solid and have less play. 
And think about your practice. What out of range body types do you have in your practice? Do you work with a lot of football players that have thick necks? Can you scan them in your particular unit? Do people fit in your machine? These are some things you need to understand about your particular machine. It'll help you better prepare for your patients in the future. And motion artifact is the worst degrade of image quality far more than anything else that we do. Ever see a scan that has no movement? It's beautiful. You see the same scan with a little bit of movement? It's not no longer that great. And a lot of movement is unacceptable. So when the person taking the x-ray, the tech, you must explain the importance of not moving strongly and clearly. It must be very important for the tech to relay that information to the patient. If it's important to the person taking the x-ray, the patient will understand the importance of not moving. I highly recommend using a head restraint, if at all possible, whether it goes across the forehead with an elastic strap or a chin cup, something that keeps the patients from moving. And I like to instruct the patient while the skein is going around the patient's head to continue to hold steady. At about halfway during the scan process, I remind them to breathe normal, teeth closed, don't move. Because it's important to me, I need to let them be remembered about it, reminded of. And we like to make sure the patient's feet are resting flat on the floor because legs will move the body, which will move the head. And if they can't rest their feet on the floor, then make sure they use a step stool for their feet. Also, if you have one of the offices that has a cone beam scan down the hall, a very long hallway, and the operator stands on the outside, of course, then we need to communicate to the patient and the operator needs to feel as if they're in the room with the patient, talking them through the scan. Because the patient may not understand when the scan is beginning, when the scalp films are finished, when they need to hold steady. So the operator needs to make sure they feel like the patient feels like they're involved with the whole scan process. So reducing motion artifact. I also recommend reducing distractions during the scan. Any distraction can add to patient movement, such as the staff, your staff, talking in earshot of the patient. If the patient can hear things, they could possibly turn their head to get a better uh, hearing of what's going on or the patient's families or the patient's friends within visual of the patient, the parents. We don't want any eye contact. Um, if the patient's family needs to be involved, they make sure they stand behind the wall and around the corner where they can't see eye contact with the patient. Other visual distractions, patients viewing people walking by in your office. If your scanner is in the hallway, traffic has to stop while the scan's going around the patient's head so they don't get any kind of visual distraction. If you have a window in your office, a fire truck goes by, that can make a noise for the patient. They might look out the window. We wanna make sure that we can reduce that kind of distraction. And make sure the patient's cell phone is turned off, that they're not holding it, and that it's sitting on another spot in the office. Patients will react to their cell phone. So I hope these tips help you with your machine, with your patient motion. Try to reduce that as much as possible. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you.